HKM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to HCAM News Live. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. HCAM News airs every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Spring Sports highlights. The first Pops concert drew in a good crowd at Hopkinton High School. And we'll tell you about some upcoming events in town you should know about. But first, this past Saturday, the Hopkinton annual town election took place and the results were revealed. When you're listening, so that contested race, which is yep. the one that I'm worried about, how'd we do? What happened? All right. Well, based on my math, which is, you know, 50 50. No, we know your math. Yes. Uh, Amanda Fargiano, her t she uh, had the most votes with 584 total. And of course, these are unofficial results. Uh, and Meg Tyler had the second most with 486. So Amanda Fargiano, Meg Tyler will be back on the school committee. And Jared Prey, he had 325. And I would say that's a pretty great result for a first-time candidate. Absolutely, especially with only 10% of the town showing up. And even if you run and lose, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, just no. you're making a great effort to serve the community, and it's an honorable thing. So and There's uh, tons of other volunteer positions out there. Right. So... Again, uh, Amanda Fargiano, 584, Meg Tyler, 486, Jared Prey, 325. Congratulations to all three candidates on a very well-ran race. And uh, all the questions, Tom, it sounded like yes. there was all in the yes? Yes, they are all approved. Question one, uh, yes, 529, no, 243. Question two, yes, 610. No, 160. Question three, yes, 613. No, 159. And question four, yes, 589. No, 181. Wow. So all four questions uh, have passed town election. So, so no, Bob, you've been here for a few years. Is this uh, how you expected it to go today when you voted? Uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I, I really appreciate the fact that it was smooth sailing coming in getting through getting out as opposed to the last election where it was a little more complicated i mean everybody was wearing masks and there wasn't really a big uh, confusion about what to do or how to do it but it was smooth but i'd like to point out and i know you guys have touched on this in the past that uh, uh, for example mr prey that uh, even though he didn't win his election all of these committees all of these uh, boards are open to the public. Their meetings are open. If you want to run for office, if you want to see what goes on, even if you have run and you still want to make an impact on that board or that committee, you can attend those meetings in public or you can watch them on HCAM. There's a little plug for HCAM, but that keeps you in the know. And it also reminds you of what the important things are for going forward for the next election or for a post you might want to run for in the future. Right. And you can always look at uh, hcam.tv. We uh, constantly have the listing of open volunteer positions. There's plenty of other boards out there other than these elected ones that you can volunteer on. Get yourself on a board and that's how you move up. I mean, because let me tell you something. You know, you look at these candidates that were there. They just didn't jump into something uh, and get themselves elected. They usually work their way up, just like anybody else. It's it's a process, and they are all unpaid volunteers, which is amazing. And I'm so glad that people do step up for these things. And, and seeing a contested race is great. There's nothing like it. That means more people to do the job that need it. And that's awesome. It's awesome. And, and that's what Hopkins famous for is the volunteerism. Absolutely. And I think we have some of the uh, best volunteers in the state, maybe even the world. 
uh, here in Hopkinton. <laughs> so it was a great town election. We'll get those results posted on our website, hcam.tv, as well as our social media. And then once uh, uh, Connor sends the full uh, unofficial results, we'll get those posted as well. But we'll get the uh, contested stuff posted tonight for you. Hiller Spring Sports had a whole lot of action the past few days. Here's a look at what happened. On Wednesday, May 19th, Hiller Boys Lacrosse took on Dover Sherborne. Greg Pierce, one of the captains for Dover Sherborne. And here he comes, approaching the net. Feeds it over, looking for a shot. Rushing in and putting it in is Bradley Peterson. That's his second goal. Dover Sherborne took the win 13-4. On Friday, May 21st, Hiller Girls Lacrosse took on Dedham and got the scoring going early and often. Hillers took the match 14 to 2. Also on Friday, May 21st, Hillers softball took on Bellingham. The Hillers plated some runs in the bottom of the first. And Can gets a piece of this one into center field. It goes. One run is in. Here comes another run. Two runs will score. A two RBI single for Charlotte Can. Four runs plated in the bottom of the first. They added four more in the second. Set to deliver, and this is tattooed into left field. One run is in. Here comes another run to score. And up to second goes Tara Kester. And she gets a good piece of this one over to center field, and it's not gonna be caught. Here comes Kester in to score. RBI single for Morse. Gets a piece of it over to right field and caught. And the runner from third will score, so she'll at least get the sacrifice. So bottom of the third, Tara Kester at the plate. Hiller's leading at the time, eight to nothing. She tattoos this ball over to right center. See you later, home run! A two RBI home run for Tara Kester. What a moon shot that was. A 10 to two, Hiller's lead. Catherine Morse to the plate. Tara Kester goes yard. Bellingham batting in the top of the fifth with two outs. Juliana Cedia trying to close out the Mercy win. There's strike three, gets her looking. Strike three, the Hillers would end up taking the game by a final of 15 to three via a five inning Mercy. On Monday, May 24th, Hiller Boys Lacrosse hosted Bellingham and got the scoring going early and often. Keith takes it out over to the far side. McDonald comes around, out in front, shot, and that is in. Logan Del Ponte, the freshman with a goal. And there's a score. Owen McDonald off a nice assist from Logan Del Ponte. Over to the far side corner. Putting on the moves, shot, deflected, picked up behind the net. Out in front, and Keith with a nice goal. Great feed from McDonald. 
Five goals in the first quarter, and the Hillers took the win in dominant fashion, 17-3. On Tuesday, May 25th, Hiller girls lacrosse celebrated senior night before taking on Norton. See the full ceremony in the game broadcast on our YouTube page. The Hillers got the scoring going early in the first half. Driving in, feeds it over. There's Hayward. Lily Hayward feeds it out in front. And a shot. And a score, Lily York. And the Hillers have it. Lily York with it behind the net. Feeds it out. And another score. York found Emma Dacey just waiting in front of the net, and she puts it in. Hopkinton improves to 6-4 and four on the season and took the win over Norton, 14-2. Right after the girls game, the boys had their senior day game versus Ashland. This goal in the third quarter by Ashland's Griffin Fink makes it a two-point game. Hillers leading 6-4 and then a parade of Hillers scoring. Stand up. Now over to Keith. Now Murphy. Approaching. It takes a shot and nets it. Connor Murphy with a beauty. Takes it in. Approaching a minute and a half left. Murphy out in front and swiped in by Owen McDonald. What a beauty of a setup. Take it around, swings it out, Murphy, closing in, shot, goal! Connor Murphy, on a beauty of a setup by Owen McDonald. Yeah, I think this might just be a direct shot. There it is. Oh, it won't count, time expired just before it was put in. Or will it? This says nine to four, so that's what we'll go with. Oh no, they did count it. 10 to 4. So, a buzzer beater. Five straight goals by the Hillers made it an 11 to 4 game at the time. Hopkinton took the win 14 to 7. The Senior Day festivities took place following the game. View the full Senior Day festivities during the game broadcast on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. We are going to take a quick time out, but a whole lot more ahead. You're watching HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as Mapfree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. You know, Dick and Rick Hoyt in the town of Hopkinton had a, a real and heartfelt connection uh, that started years and years ago and it's uh, persisted right to this this very moment um, and to have the sculpture uh, in front of center school which honors team Hoyt uh, is, is going to be even more memorable now uh, with the passing of Dick to me besides the athletic accomplishments of Dick Hoyt the most powerful example that they set forth is the, the strong and, and, and bonding relationship between a father and son. That's really what unconditional love is all about. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton High School welcomed back the Pops Band, and a good crowd was on hand. Here's a look. Bring me a little water, Sylvie. Oh 
Health Director Sean McAuliffe was recently on our Hopkinton Hangout Hour program to reveal some very good news. Hopkinton Health Director Sean McAuliffe recently gave a health update on our Hangout Hour program. Out the CDC, you know, do we wear masks? Do we not wear masks? We're getting to that point in Hopkinton where I, I'm actually okay with everything that the governor is about to do. I mean, we're, you know, for those who well, haven't heard and will definitely hear later tonight, um, Massachusetts will be for the for all intents and purposes, opened up on uh, May 29th. So um, there'll be a few exceptions where, you know, face coverings will be required, but um, all other restrictions are going to be lifted. And then come June 15th, the uh, emergency declaration will be lifted. So, um, and a lot of... Get in all your bills in now before. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm sitting there looking at, I'm sitting on all this grant money that I got yeah, <laughs> to wow. figure out what I need. Um, but, you know, so what does that mean for Hopkinton? I mean, it means that, you know, all of the businesses, and I've been, I've been in touch with a bunch of them today, um, you know, they should start making plans to open up, figure out what, you know, their, their return to a normal operation is gonna look like, because as we were discussing, you know, they have the right to require face coverings and to set up, you know, uh, protocols um, that are a little more, you know, that are more stringent if they aren't fully comfortable with opening up. Um, and that's one of the things that the governor and the secretary were stating today, you know, we. We're, we're allowed to open up, but um, we need to be, our, you know, we need to respect, you know, businesses' decisions, you know, as as we are going through this process. Right. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Because they, they did mention that we're not going to have any kind of unvaccinated ID card, you know, proof of no, ID, no. this and, and, but there are still people that, you know, found a new way, and I, we'll go into the service industry. They found a new way to serve the public uh, during this pandemic. And like you and me, we got some ideas of, you know, having to be creative in this time. And we got the ideas and there's some things that we're going to stick with. And mask could be one of them. They yeah. may want, you may see this service with the mask all the time. You may see service with gloves all the time. Uh, they may ask you, Hey, you know, we we may limit the tables to six, though. You know, stuff like that yeah. that, they, that they had to adapt to. So you got to respect it. You know, the, let's put it this way: I never seen so many signs in in one place at any time. It, it's just incredible. And you know, some people. Oh, I still forget my basket. I mean, come on, it's been a year. You know, yeah. I can potty uh, train it. I can potty train the dog best. You know. Yeah. But it, it's but these people still want to have their mask and they're going to expect you to do it. So you're not going to get rid of those masks yet. No, and, and the, it's funny because like I, I've been, you know, when someone asked me, you know, what the last year has been like, I, you know, it's 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 this interesting story. And then when I get around to this time, I'm like, and people are, the, the, I'm finding people are just at their wits, at they're at their end. And, you know, they're, they're fighting me on everything. And I have one who has been writing me weekly about face coverings. And, and I'm like, but you, you can't argue with, you know, the data, you know, if you look at just the municipal offices, we've had the lowest rate of absenteeism ever. Um, when I look at the school data or the town data, we had the lowest rate of, um, aside from COVID, respiratory illnesses. So flu, the common cold, um, you know, things like norovirus, all of the things that you would get, especially in the school setting. Um, it just, we haven't seen that this year. Right. So, right. I, I mean, I personally think that there is a place for face coverings in the schools and they will still be required in the schools. Sure. Um, but, you know, these are the things to, you know, to consider maybe during cold and flu season, um, 
people might want to wear a face covering. Right now, um, the funny thing today was my one of my daughters took their face coverings off um, and they were exposed to the pine pollen. They started uh, sneezing. Right. And I said, well, until the allergy medicine takes effect, maybe you want to put the face covering on. And, and then they stopped sneezing. So, you know, it, we learned a lot this year. So, I, I mean, I, I think like many others, I'm not a fan of wearing a face covering, but, you know, I didn't have any of the sinus infections I normally get. You know, I, I get my flu shot, so I didn't have any flu. Um, and uh, aside from being incredibly exhausted and in need of a long vacation, uh, you know, I'd say my, my family made out pretty well. <laughs> View the entire program on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. Let's take a look at the upcoming Hopkinton Hillers spring sports broadcast schedule. On Tuesday, June 1st, we're back from the Memorial Day break with girls across versus Medway at 4 p.m., boys and girls track versus Medfield at 3.30 p.m., and baseball versus Bellingham at 6.30 p.m. On Thursday, June 3rd, Baseball and softball take on Westwood. Both games are at 3.45 p.m. Girls lacrosse versus Ashland at 4 p.m. And wrestling versus Ashland at 7 p.m. There will be an outside wrestling meet. On Monday, June 7th, boys lacrosse versus Westwood at 6.30 p.m. The Hopkinton Lions Club and the Hopkinton Fire Department hosting the golf ball drop Saturday, June 26th at 2 p.m., you can head over to our website, hcam.tv, for all the information. It is a great fundraiser hosted by the Hopkinton Lions Club and the Hopkinton Fire Department. It supports eye research, local charities, and families throughout the community. Upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts include Sunday Jazz Jam on Sunday, June 13th. For all the upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, head over to hopartscenter.org. Our picture of the week, the Hopkinton Hillers boys lacrosse team celebrated senior night after a 14-7 win over Ashland. You could view a full collection of photos that are seen in Hopkinton at seenandhopkinton.org. A big thank you to John Ritz for the wonderful photos. Upcoming government meetings include the select board on Tuesday, June 1st at 6 p.m. That'll be live on HCAM TV. And don't forget, Friday, June 4th at 6 p.m., we'll have the Hopkinson High School graduation on HCAM Ed. For all the information about upcoming town government meetings, head over to HopkintonMA.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News. Don't worry, next Thursday at 6.30 p.m., we will be back. As always, thank you for tuning in. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.